All right, so this is our Charles Law Lab setup. I have an iron ring stand, iron ring, wire gauze, Bunsen burner, three beakers, a thermometer, a piece of yarn, a ruler, and a balloon. Now, what we're going to do before we actually set anything up is make sure that when you tie your balloon, it actually does fit inside of the smallest beaker you have. Now, because, you know, we have different sized beakers, that means that you're going to want to make sure that you can completely submerge the balloon inside of the liquid that we're going to be putting inside of the containers, okay? So make sure that before you tie a knot or anything around your balloon, you actually get the right sized beaker. All right, now, in addition to this, we're going to be heating up water using the apparatus that we just talked about. We're gonna have ice water in one of them. We're gonna have room temperature water, and then we're going to have warm water. The warm water should be at about 60 degrees Celsius or so, um, maybe up to 70 or 80. We don't want it to boil, though. That's the point. We don't want it to scold you if it accidentally you know, spills out. So what we're going to do is take a look at the circumference of our balloon. And the reason why we have this piece of yarn here and this ruler is so that you can quickly wrap the yarn around the balloon and get an idea of how its circumference sort of changes with the different temperatures of water. So we're gonna take an initial circumference, okay? And our initial circumference is going to be our sort of control group, which is in room temperature water. So whatever the circumference is in room temperature water, quickly take the balloon out wrap around the yarn and see if you can find out how many centimeters that would be, okay? Now you're gonna repeat that again with the ice water to see if there's a change in circumference and then also in the um, warm water to see if there's a change in circumference. Remember that when we're measuring our temperatures of all of our liquids here, we're going to need to convert from our Celsius on here to Kelvin, otherwise it's not really going to work. Now, finally, how are we going to actually get volume from this information? Well, we have these two equations, okay? This gives us our radius, which is why we are finding the circumference of our balloon. So circumference divided by two times pi, that gives us the radius. Then we can plug that into how to find the volume of a sphere, okay? And then you just plug in the radius here, and you're gonna get a volume in centimeters cubed, cubed centimeters or milliliters. Now here's the thing about these things. We're assuming the balloon is a perfect sphere. It is not, but it is a good enough assumption that we'll actually be able to get some meaningful data out of it. And that's it for Charles Law.